Joining me now is Julie Parker. She is the Director of Media Relations for the Fairfax Police Department. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate Thanks for having it. me. Um, it's a tough job that you have. You have to find the happy medium between the police department and the media. It's not always an easy job for you. It's not, and then there's the, the other element of social media, which very often can get ahead of both a police department and of the traditional media. So it's a very dynamic career right now. Right, so I guess from the social media aspect of it, I mean, what do you tell your uh, officers, your department heads and so on about how they need to handle that? It can be good and bad, I would imagine, and depending how they, how they deal with it. So our mission is, uh, as a media relations bureau, that we should break the news ourselves. It's, it's our story. We right. are investigating something. We should be breaking the news, not responding to media inquiries or to people on social media asking us what's happening. So we, in our Media Relations Bureau, try to follow that philosophy of be out in front, be first, and be accurate. And why do you say that? Why do you need to be out there first? And well, we know why you need to be accurate, obviously, but why is it getting your word out first is so important? Because I think now more than ever in law enforcement in 2017, that it is critical for a police department to have a voice in the conversation. And if you arrive late to the game, you're not in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, large departments, they have more people to do this sort of thing. You get some of the smaller departments, I mean, they're happy to be able to cover the streets and, and take care of patrols and so on. Don't always have time for social media, that sort of thing. So how would smaller departments handle something like this? Or what would you encourage them to do and maybe not do as far as social media? Sometimes departments aren't permitted by the county government, for example, to be on social media. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they're, they're hamstrung. But if the person who's in charge of the media, who might be also in charge of the robbery investigations, that sort of thing happens, and there are mm -hmm. 18,000 police departments across the country, right. some of them with 10 sworn officers. So some people are playing dual roles. And if you are the PIO, even if it's in a part-time capacity, it's, it's incumbent upon you to have some sort of working relationship with the reporters who cover your department. And that can make all the difference between whether your department gets fair coverage or not. And you definitely want to make sure you get fair coverage. You've been on both sides of this. You've been in the media, you work with the police department now. Um, what have you seen as far as maybe some mistakes made by either side when it comes to um, social media or just dealing with the other side? I think sometimes both sides are quick to judge the other side. So for example, if, if a reporter does a, a biased story that, that may be biased against a police department, you could find some in the law enforcement community who just write that reporter off completely. But what about having a conversation with that reporter about why did you cover it that way and how can we help you cover it more fairly, more accurately. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, and, the, and conversely with the folks in the media, if you have an officer do something wrong, that you can't just write off that department as they're a bad department. Every profession has people who can go a little rogue. Mm -hmm. um, there are some departments too that may not think exactly like that. They don't want to give out so much information because they feel ultimately that's best for them, their right. department, right. Um, that's best for their case. They don't want to jeopardize the case. And uh, you know, what would you say to them about maybe holding on to that information? I think it's natural uh, in law enforcement to want to hold everything close to the vest, to protect that inve investigation. Things have changed so dramatically in law enforcement media relations that it is a challenge for the folks, whether you're sworn or civilian, who work in a media relations division, or if you're a party of one, mm -hmm. to convince the investigators that giving up a certain amount of information can make the difference between your department getting out an accurate story and something taking off incorrectly on social media. And you don't want to be on the receiving end of a story that has taken off incorrectly about your agency. And ultimately, I guess, you're, you're serving the people of the community, whether you're with the police department or the media for that matter. What we try to always remember in our Media Relations Bureau is that it's not just about the media. You are using the media to get to the broader community. But we try to think about it, we're talking to 
everyone all at once, not just the TV stations, the big newspapers, the radio stations. Right. All right. Julie Parker, uh, Director of Media Relations with the Fairfax Police Department, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.